This week we'll be going over the Bowel Whistler achievement in Outlast. This one is for completing the Whistleblower DLC on Insane Mode. It's not as hard as completing the base game on Insanity for Lunatic, but it still has some pretty tough parts to get through. And now, let's get into it. So the Battle Whistler achievement is for completing the DLC Whistleblower on Insane Difficulty. Of course, Insane means you have one life. If you die, you have to go back to the beginning of the game. And you're also only going to have a maximum of two batteries for your camera. That's going to make it a lot harder to see as you go through it. We're going to have a pretty long little intro area and nothing is going to happen throughout here that you could die from so I'm not really going to worry about it you also don't have to replay this part if you do die fun little fact we're going to get licked good good uh you're licking asmr i think i think this dude i think this dude actually did it before amaranth but um yeah so we're going to be going through that. I'm just going to show you the whole process. We're going to cut out some cutscenes as we go through. I'm going to leave at least some of the uh, this beginning part just because. Got to do the uh, intro talking stuff. But yeah. You have one life. You take a lot more damage. Enemies are going to be faster. There's going to be less batteries. That's another thing. I don't know if uh, the base game did that. But at least for this one, you have less batteries out there that you can pick up. I think the I think the original one did that too. Because I don't remember there being as many batteries laying around. Um, partway through, you actually lose your batteries anyway in this one. So I don't think it's as big of a deal. This DLC honestly is not that bad compared to the base game. It's a lot easier to get through. The uh, story and everything, really good. The way it all ties in together, very nice. Definitely go into the first kind of playthroughs blind if, uh, if you want the height of the experience. But um, yeah, we're just going to kind of walk through Completing it on insanity or on insane. Of course, you've got all of this beginning stuff where you're just walking around in the underground lab. We're gonna have quite a bit to do here because instead of being an investigator that comes, you are the person that sent that investigator the initial email. So, we started out by typing up an email trying to send it. We come out here, we're doing some stuff. Pretty messed up, we don't like it. It, uh, it takes a little bit. We may or may not get in trouble. A little bit. Nobody should doubt Mr. Wayland Park. He can get everything done. But yeah, this, uh, I, I was going to try to do this in one try, but I think I ended up doing three tries. There's, um, there's one spot early on that got me, but, um, it really is not that bad. Like, the part with, uh, we're going to call him your husband, the part with him... That was pretty stressful. I don't... I, I feel like you could die pretty easily there. But, uh... I got, I got that part done first try. It was just some dumb early things that I got messed up on. Gotta put them in the engine. So yeah, this... This whole kind of prologue intro area takes forever to get through but it is very cool because 
We're going through all this stuff and then the rest of the DLC at the same time as your character during the base game. So there's a couple of spots where it kind of kind of merges a little bit and it's like, oh, literally I go through this exact same area when I go through it in the first one or in the uh, base game. So that's cool. And of course you get you get caught here. Hands where he can see them. They uh they like to beat us a little bit. We failed on our uh, initial try getting the word out. Or at least that's what they say. But apparently it gets out cuz uh Somebody comes. But yeah, there's a lot of little tie-ins and stuff. Very nice, very cool. I'll, uh, I'll try to point those out as we go through. You're going to see a lot of familiar areas, though. Or some familiar areas. Did you hear that, Agent? He said yes, Mr. Blair. Great. I do not believe we said anything. We also did not do that. But yeah, if you do end up dying, you do not have to do any of this first. So the first, like, six minutes, yeah, like six and a half minutes, you don't have to replay. So that's cool. They made they made it a little bit easier from that perspective. But yes, we are in the Whistleblower. DLC. Now, I kind of skipped a little bit of uh, waiting time there. But this is the point where you'll actually come back to when we're waking up in the, uh, like, brainwashing center. And of course, they have to tie in having a camera, so we're going to grab the camera that's in front of us over there. We also have the, uh, like, flashes of the... Uh, what do they call that? The ink blot things where it's like, oh, what, what, what do you see here? That whole thing. We have like flashes of that. Periodically throughout the game. But yeah, so we're going to grab the camera and immediately turn off our light. Because, uh, yeah, we do not have much when it comes to uh, batteries in this one. Honestly, I don't even I don't even get anywhere close to running out, but I mean, might as well conserve it when you can. Um, also, of course, turn up your brightness, your gamma, stuff like that. Make that part a little bit easier. You're still gonna have pitch black areas, but at least in general, things will be a little bit lighter. You won't feel the need to use your night vision as much. So we're gonna run through. And go straight down here. Take that left. And then just take another left right past him and open this door. I don't know if the wall rider will kill you if you don't go quick enough, but he at least hits you once. You just run through here. And I never died. You just keep moving. I don't know if it's even possible to die. We have this nice little scene here. And you might be thinking, man, this is a little, a little gruesome. Well, this shit gets a lot worse. This gets much, much worse in this, uh, this DLC. They said, oh, some people, some people thought the first one or the, uh, the base game was a little gruesome. Let's, let's just pump it up a million notches. Yeah, you'll run through there and... Go ahead and go through that door. You'll want to keep moving because that dude's coming. You just jump up into this vent. And then my uh, my little trick to getting through vents and stuff without using much battery is just look down or look at the uh, the wall next to you. And you can kind of see where it's going. Because when you get close enough, it, you can actually see it. 
So that's always my little trick to getting through the vents and stuff like that without having to use any battery. So then when you drop down, you're going to move this. We have a little spook coming right here. Um, whenever I was just playing through it, it was much more of a little spook. But uh, then you come out, go ahead and run down here and into this little room. Hit the button. Then we're going to watch this guy get killed. And yeah, there's a lot with this one. You just keep sprinting. Like, there is not nearly as many uh, spots where you would die as long as you just keep moving. Um, I tried to open the door a little bit too early, but we're just going to run right around and into here. Because Wall Rider is coming after us. We have to hurry up so he doesn't catch us. But once we're in this, we're safe. And then just keep going. We'll turn to the right and then loop back around over here and hop up over this. And of course, there's collectibles all throughout here. Um, but... I'm not going to show you any of those on this. We've got a video coming out next week that'll go through all those. Now, right up here. This is where we're going to have our first real enemy. Is uh, this dude with the saw. So we're going to come out here. So far, he, he's not actually coming after us. We're just running through. It's a very dark area, though. But right here is the first real chase area, but literally all you do, you jump over, run straight through. You might have to use your light to uh, make sure you're not going to run into anything. But just keep sprinting, you'll turn left back there, go through this door on your right, and go straight through to this door. And then to your right, you have this little hole that you can jump through. And boom, we're safe for now. So then we're going to run down here and grab this key. And then essentially we uh, we run through here. And as soon as you get through this door, you're going to take a left. And then run back the way that we just came. And he's chasing you again, but as long as you sprint, you're fine. You jump through there, use your key on here. And then we go through this door. And so then, at this point, um, we're just going to run right up to this door. He's going to grab us. He's going to try to chop us up a little bit, but we, uh, we're a little too strong. We stop him from doing that one. And then he's going to say, you know what? Get in the oven, and we will, uh, we are going to cook. Just kidding. Yeah, don't uh, don't do a 360 and go towards that that area because you have to break out on the brick side. I don't think that's a very effective uh, crematorium with a giant hole in the back. But so then we're gonna go up here, climb up the ladder, and do a little get a little platforming action. We gotta do coming up here. Yeah, going through the insane mode achievements for Outlast. Definitely the first one was a lot harder. There's just a lot more to worry about. And it's also... It didn't... It honestly doesn't take that much longer. But it just feels so much longer going through that one. I think because it's uh, there's so many spots where you could get hurt um, but then at this point of course I uh, accidentally tried to go through that side we're just running through here nothing's going on yet he is uh, doing this once you get through this little library you're gonna run to the right of him and he might hit you once you just keep running you saw me jump past him you can also jump past him. 
And we got a thing to jump over there and then you dodge and weave throughout these little beds. You squeeze through here and then you are good to go. That's one of the spots that I died before because if you run to the left of him, he's just going to trap you there and he'll kill you. Uh, but if you run around the right, you can just kind of slide past him or do what I did, jump past, you don't even get hit. Um, so then, kind of go through some more little areas. We got this dude, tries to do a little, little spook on you. And we will keep going through here. And now, as soon as you open this door, we're going to run to the right. And then go through this little red light door. And then jump up into the vent. I got kind of stuck trying to get through that vent. I was hitting jump a few times, but you just go up here and you're basically good. You just run through this door after you drop through. Squeeze through here. And then I think we have, what, I think there's one more area that we're going to have to deal with that guy. Go, away. Like go through the door next to uh, the cop that wants us to go away, or the security guy, whatever. Now as soon as you go through here, you heard his, uh, heard his little saw, you're going to run over to the left and see him coming. So we're going to run back and do a little loop-de-loop -loop around the room. Saw him chasing us right there. You're just going to run around. Uh, don't cut through there. I played it a little risky. You just go around the edge all the way and make him follow you. And you take this left and jump up here. Once you get up here, you're not going to get hit. Uh, but we do have to make our way back in a second, so... But we'll go in here to the gas room and turn that off. Turn it on, whichever way. Whichever way we do that. That way we can actually go through this little tunnel. Now normally you would run to the right. But uh, he can kind of be wherever. So you'll run to the right, see where he is. If he's there, then alright, you just run the way that I just went. Run around the left, go through this little back spot. Go back the way we came. But uh, otherwise, you can usually run around the right side and just run straight back to this little entrance area. Um, the first the first time that I did it, that's how it went for me. But uh, saw there, he was in a different spot. But now at this point, we are on the outside. Honestly, this is not too bad. It's pretty safe. There's not really much that can uh, hurt you. I, uh, I start going the wrong way here because kind of get lost. So let's uh, just kind of wait until I get back to the entrance area. Here we go. So basically, once you come out, you go to the left and then to the right. You kind of follow these random people that are running around. It's uh, very hard to see because it's so foggy. That's just like a little jump scare. No worries there. Jump through there, run through the trees a little bit. And then you have to go up to the left and go all the way down this way. First. So you go all the way back here, kind of walk into the room, turn back around, go back the way we came. Because there's scripted stuff that it wants you to go through. There's also little documents and stuff to record going that way, but... So we go the other way, we can finally drop down on here. And then we're gonna have a ladder. Now, once we come up the ladder, we've got one area coming up with the twins. Um, I don't remember what their actual name is, but it's the two naked dudes that uh, kind of chase you around for a while in the first one, or in the base game. I keep saying first one like it's two different games, but just the DLC, which feels like its own game. Yeah, you hear him talking right now, it's the, uh, the two that are like, he seems nervous, 
I would like to kill him. Just crouch down once you get up here. You'll see them walking out. As long as you stay away from them, they don't do anything. If you walk up to them, they will chop your head off. Just keep a little bit of distance and you'll be fine though. Um, and then, once you get in the basketball area, just uh, kind of keep your distance from that dude in the middle. I don't know if he actually hits you or anything, but he does keep saying uh, spoiled sport or something. And, uh, I don't know, he seems, he seems like he'd be a little bit of an angry boy. So I'm not trying to mess with him. And then, we'll just kind of keep running around here. We're about to be at the end of the recreation area. This ladder to go up, and then, I think it's just around the corner where we get the door that we're going to go through. Yeah, right here. So then we're going to run down here and try to get over to the prison area. We're going to cut into the left room here, this little security area to get this uh, radio going. And we will be interrupted by this guy. So there's a uh, an old friend that's going to meet us in a second. Mr. Chris Walker, the big boy. It's the only time that we really have to deal with him going through the DLC, though. Now, up until this point, I don't, I don't think there's really been anybody that would one-shot you other than those twins. They do one-shot you if you walk up to them. But um, I don't think anybody else so far has been able to one-shot you. This dude, however, can still one-shot you. So all you're really going to do is sneak your way up here and just crawl behind this chair and wait. So as soon as he kind of gets past you, then we can run and just sprint your way down. You're going to take a left, jump over this table, take another left, go through this door. And then we kind of run off to the left through a couple more doors, jump this, and once we squeeze through here... He can no longer get us. I kind of look back at him. Our one time with Chris. And at this point, we will be at the prison. Um, in this door, we have a battery. If you want to uh, pick that up. Might as well. I don't, I don't think we uh, get to the point of using it, but, you know. And then, of course, you probably recognize that guy writing on the wall that's... Uh, that's one of the notes that you can record in the base game. Um, as you run through here, you're just going to keep sprinting. Because there's, uh, there's a guy chasing you as you go through this hallway. But basically, you just keep running. Um, and then once we get in this area, it's going to be the last window on the right that we jump through. It's this one with the uh, curtain kind of blowing in the wind. You just jump out the window right there, and boom. And so then at this point, we're going to kind of drop down here. And then we are in the drying ground, is what they call this. So we'll just kind of run through here. I missed that, uh, that jump the first time. I could not figure out where I was supposed to go, where I was just kind of going through doing all the collectibles. It took me a second to figure that one out. Um, over here, of course, you don't go to the fence yet. We're going to go off to the left and go down to go shut off the power. If you want to, you can look in that, uh, that little... Little door right there and see what that dude's doing. It's nothing good. I can tell you that. You saw like a little shadow up above us. That's who we're gonna have to deal with in a minute. 
but you'll come back up here because we just shut off the power and we're gonna have somebody that's uh trying to mess with us a little bit oh man <laughs> you got us you turned that power back on well we got to go back down there and we know that he is also down there just uh hitting us with them fat pranks Oh, look at all that blood. Looks like the, the dude over there died. So you're going to hit that and immediately turn around and start running. He's going to hit you once. Just don't let him hit you again. If he hits you a second time, you're dead. But we'll just run back up here and go through that gate that was electrified. This one right here. Now, I think there's a chance that that kind of gets messed up a little bit to where you can't activate it, but um, if that's the case, just kind of run around in circles, keep checking that door, see if you can get into it. Whenever I was going through not on insane mode, it, it got messed up for me and I had to run around for like five minutes until it finally let me open it. Luckily on insane, it did not do that. Um, past this point, I don't, I don't think there's anything else that's gonna hurt you in the drying ground area you'll come up here and then I guess technically you could die on these it's just not an enemy but uh, we have a couple of platforming areas right up here. So of course this jump, just look down. Make sure you hit it. If you fall, you're gonna die. So just make sure you don't miss that. I would definitely be pretty, uh, pretty upset if I got this far on a uh, <laughs> permadeath run and died like that. So definitely be careful there. Um, and then this is a much bigger jump. Same thing. Just look down at the ground as you run up to it and uh, make sure you hit it. But of course, even if you do hit it, you're still going to fall because that is how the game is scripted. And now at this point, we're going to move on to the vocational block. And this is... Uh, this is where... The DLC spends, what, about half of the time? <laughs> There's a lot going on here. This is where things get the pinnacle of gross and uh, disturbing. Pretty cool. I enjoyed this area. Um, very, uh, very intense, though. So at this point, you're just, you're just going to have to go through the maze. It's very dark in here. But that's why we have our little batteries. And I mean, at this point, what? I've got one and a half batteries sitting in there. It's it's plenty. Very, very unnecessary to have that many batteries. To bear our guilt, our gender, a small piece of flesh between us and the... So if you listen to what they're saying... You'll kind of have an idea of what we're going to be coming up against pretty soon with our uh, our groom, our husband. And of course, if you come up to the right, I think it's right here, where there's a... Uh, yeah, you can see that battery kind of flashing. We do have a battery up here. So if you've been using a decent amount of your night vision, and you're kind of getting low on batteries, you can grab one up here. So at this point, we've got two full batteries and about a little bit less than half of our current battery. Which I I think maybe, maybe I reload one time before there's a scripted event where we lose all of our batteries. So honestly, you probably don't need to get that, that last one, but better to uh, be safe with that. Now this dude that's hanging you you might you might get a little jump from that 
it's a pretty spooky little spot if you're uh, flashing your your night vision on and off, but you know. We just gotta keep going through the maze pretty soon. Yeah, so they they hear us kinda walking around. They think it's rats in the walls. They uh they do not like rats, that's for sure. We have to push this out of the way. We're still not going to have to deal with them yet. You'll see when we do. But honestly, these guys are not too bad to deal with either. So then... Kind of go around here, which I thought about reloading my battery uh, right before you jump over this, but honestly, like, it's kind of lit up, and you just don't even need it. But right here, whenever we jump over, this is going to be where the chase starts. So you're going to jump over and then come over to the left, because they immediately see you. And then you're going to stand right here, let this dude see you and get close. I didn't wait long enough, so he uh, he, he does this. It's like, okay, you, you lost me somehow. So you got to get his attention, jump over this, and run right past him through here. Then you take a left. You're going to jump over that. And just kind of keep running around until you can get up here. And we jump over. And there you go. That is that. Very easy to get through. You just kind of do a little a little juke on him. But he's he's so dumb that it kind of is hard to do. But then we'll run around here. Of course, we've got that scene. I'll let you guys uh, I'll let you guys look at that on your own. So you'll run around some more eventually we're, we're gonna see a door I go oh, okay so I do reload right there that's the one time I reload my batteries in this game so you're gonna come up here you're gonna open this door we're gonna see our groom our future husband he's he's very intense very overbearing we just want our space but he doesn't want to give that to us so he's gonna come through that door and basically what you do is just run back into this room and then do like a, a similar thing that we've been doing. Just kind of loop around these, these tables. That way we are leading the chase and he's coming behind us and it's not, it's not anything too crazy. Then we just run through the door that he came through, through this door, through this door, and then I'm going to go ahead and close this one just in case. And then we go down this little hallway. So he'll come through here. Yeah, he'll start singing for us. Nice and nice and creepy. So we're gonna push that out of the way and go through here. Just start running some more to the left. Honestly, just keep going as fast as you can with this one. Because I think, I think this whole area was probably the most anxiety I have had playing through this game or the DLC. This dude is, is, uh, is a little much. Um, definitely shut that door when you go through it. And you'll run over here to the left and jump over to the ladder. And uh, this part's going to hurt, but we're going to fall down. And uh, boom. There's our there's our leg through the uh, elevator to roof. Got our got our wood sticking through. Just take that out. And of course, our our beloved our husband is just or our groom is is just so upset and worried about us. Rather die than be with me. We would also rather die. And so then he, he says, okay, well, you can just die then. 
I I would like to not be uh, turned into his his bride. That's just a personal thing. He's not my type. You might you might uh, differ from that. But we'll run through here. Uh, okay, we'll limp through here. And uh, you just kind of sprint limp down the bloody trail. And then around here, you see this this locker right here. We're gonna walk up to the door, try it to trigger him to come through, and you're just gonna hop into the uh, hop into the locker. You have to hop into this. If you don't, you die. So so just jump into the locker, and he's gonna come over and uh, I'll lock us in there. And we've been caught. A delicacy. Unfortunate. Again. He wants to unwrap us twice, whatever that means. Here we go. Oh boy, here we go. So there is, uh, I don't. It's a, it's a good five minutes or so of cutscene here. This is where you get the real graphics. The, the most graphic things that I have probably seen in a game. So, we're going to skip ahead to the end of our uh, little cutscene time here. And yeah, I will, I will see you at the end of that. I want a family, a legacy, to be the father I never had. I'll never let anything happen to our children. Not like... Darling, this will help you relax. Darling, I need you to try to bleed less. I know the fair sex often endure the same wounds with more suffering, but you really... I can't believe he's cheating on us with us in the room. Wow. Okay, so, uh... Yeah, I, uh probably put in a couple of little clips there just to give you a little bit of an idea of uh, why this part's so graphic but luckily we did not get anything cut off and then we just kind of run over to the left and crouch down behind this table and we're gonna kind of just wait for him to uh, to walk to a way where we can wrap around because we have to run past him. He looks at us. And he starts chasing. He goes very slow here. So you can outrun him by limp running. So it's honestly... It, it feels much worse than your situation actually is. As soon as you get through this door, close it. Kind of slow him down a little bit. Then we're going to do the same thing right here with this door. Open, close... And then same thing right here. But uh, for this one, we're not even going to worry about closing it. Because now, we jump through the window. And uh, our hurt leg is even more hurt. And he is very angry. I do not appreciate being called a slut, sir. But okay, so then we can move on to kind of the last area, really. I mean, we're still on the vocational block, but it's the last part of vocational block. And past this point, uh, once we get through our last encounter with our groom... We'll be good to go. Of course, during that whole thing, he takes all of our batteries, so we have no batteries in the camera. We have to come in this little room, grab our one battery that we're allowed. And we'll go ahead and reload to stick that in there. And then I don't really use it much. You can use it more if you want to. Um, it, it's your only battery you're going to get here, but you honestly don't really need it that much like this kitchen area you do kind of need it but then you'll jump through this vent we got plenty of light in here 
things are not too dark out here. We have uh, all of his previous victims hanging up here. Yeah, <laughs> he's he's gone through a lot in what this is like two days time maybe. But uh, we'll we'll go through the right through this little great door, and then as we walk down the aisle, he's gonna show up behind us. We're just gonna grab the key and then jump through this little area. This is a little bit of a trick, okay? So you go through this little little gap on the right. We're gonna push this out of the way. And he's wrapping around. So we open this door, we kinda look down here. Just gonna wait here for a second. Where's our groom? There he is. So then we're gonna squeeze back through here, right? And so as we go through there, he's going to start coming around this other side. So we're going to kind of meet him down here. Just make sure that he chases us. Because we want him to come as far down here as we can get him. At this point, we're going to squeeze through here. And now that he's back there, we're going to have enough time to run past him and back down here. And that's like the easy trick to get through that area without having much going on. So you'll just kind of run all the way down his, uh, his little gymnasium here. Jump into the vent and... Honestly, at this point, unless you actively try to lose, you're good to go. That was the last semi could be hard part in the game come down here we try to use our key to exit and then of course he finds us he grabs us i don't know how that punch just happened like that but so he's just gonna he's just gonna beat us very abusive you can hang like the rest of them and this is how we leave our uh our exit is exiting life. Just kidding. We, uh, we're a little too strong for him. But yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot of, a lot of dead naked people that he has, uh, he has, uh, operated on. As you can see. <laughs> and the roof cannot hold all of our our bodies up here so he's having some issues then you have to shake your mouse or right stick or whatever i almost missed that i didn't realize he had to do that but luckily i uh i had my hand pretty close to the mouse so i just started swinging that around and then uh somehow he gets impaled and that's that we are essentially done of course, recording him is another one of the notes, but there's not really a point in doing that if you don't do all the other ones, so I'm not going to mess with that. We'll, uh, we'll go through that in our 100% guide next week. But yeah, at this point, we, uh, we get to move on to the very last kind of chapter which is exit we get to see the uh, burning church out there we just kind of keep going and of course right here we've got uh, Traeger's dead body you guys remember Traeger And then I don't I don't think there's anywhere throughout here that you could die. I don't think. It's all just kinda Just kind of running through. You can listen to things, look at things, whatever you want to do. Um It's more just like story for the end. Because this is the part where the military or whoever is coming to clean things up and they make their way down to go kill 
our uh, our main story character. But the DLC character gets to run through. We just go through the stairs down here, and we've got one more. Or I guess I guess we kind of meet two more people going through this. But we come back up to this guy. We can we can try to help him up. But he's got that knife. He's gonna stab us in the stomach. Oh man, is this how we end our run? We die at the very end. But no, the wall rider comes and saves us. So yeah, after that, uh, that explosive ending, all we have to do at this point is sprint to the end, and luckily they don't make us crawl all the way there like they did in the base game. We can actually sprint, kind of. It's, it's the limp sprint still, but we can do it much quicker. And then of course, as we're coming out here, it's like the only chance that you have to look at the uh, the place during the daytime. So I was like, oh, maybe, maybe that would be a, a decent thumbnail. So I was kind of looking around. Seeing if, uh, seeing if you could do that, but yeah, that's that's basically it for this. Um, you just walk up to the car, and that's the last action that we have to do to get the Bowel Whistler achievement. All right, now that we uh, got out of there, we do actually have one other thing that we have to do. There's a little bit of a uh, little thing going on here with uh, viral leaks. Because we have to hit upload to get the word out about all these things that we saw. So in a second, once we can actually hit upload, that is when we will finally be done. So, if you like these videos, if you are an achievement hunter or just think it is an interesting thing, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and um, yeah, I'll see you in the next one.